but certainly not least, we have Simon, who's a director of engineering at Eventbrite. Um, inspired by his database journalism projects at The Guardian, he built data set to encourage people to publish more data in a useful way. So let's give it up for Simon. Hey, good evening, everyone. So yeah, this is, um, I'm going to give you a lightning tour of Dataset, um, which is a project I've been working on for the last few months. Um, and Dataset is a way of taking any SQLite database and instantly turning it into a browsable web interface and a JSON API that you can then publish on the internet. Because it turns out the world is absolutely full of SQLite databases. As a very quick example, let's say you've installed Dataset, I'm going to show you my Chrome browser history, because it turns out Google Chrome stores your his browsing history in a SQLite database. Actually, Safari and Firefox do as well, so it's clearly, you know, it's taking over the application world very, um, very quietly. So I'm going to run Dataset, I'm going to pass it um, the path to my Chrome history, it fires up um, and starts up a web server, and here it is. This is my Chrome history. I have not looked in this, so hopefully this will be fine. But um, let's, uh, um, and you'll, these are all of the tables that are, exist in that database. I'll click on downloads. Here are things that I've downloaded. I can um, start filtering. So I'm going to say where current path ends with .dmg. That should be relatively inoffensive. There we go. Um, and I can also get those back as JSON. So if I click on JSON, here's my recent download browser history as JSON. I can click view and edit SQL and actually start editing the SQL statement itself. Dataset opens databases read-only. So actually, arbitrary SQL statements are completely fine. It's not that you're going to be able to SQL inject your way into modifying my data because it's, it's an immutable thing. So that's my Chrome history. That's kind of fun. But let's do something much more interesting. Um, it turns out the city of San Francisco run an open, open data portal, and they've got some really cool things on there. My absolute favorite is a CSV file of every tree in San Francisco. <laughs> this, has, this, is, this is so great, right? This has 189,000 rows, and I can click Export and CSV, and now I've downloaded a CSV file full of trees. Um, let's take a quick look at it. Uh, head, street tree, list. There we go. It's, it's comma separated. What did you expect? Um, so I wrote another tool called CSVs to SQLite, which can take a CSV file and turn it into a SQLite database. So I'll run it now. CSVs to SQLite, streettrees.csv. I'll call it tree.db, and it's going to churn away and run through those 190,000. It's using pandas under the hood. And now I've got a database called tree.db. So let's load that up. And trees. Here they are. Um, now, this is all well and good, but you'll notice that we, we're talking about a relational database. This is not very relational. There was a lot of duplicated data in here. So one thing that CSVs to SQLite can do is it can refactor your CSV into something that's a little bit more relational. Um, I'll do that now. So CSVs to SQLite, um, pass it that CSV, and I'm going to tell it to extract some columns. So I want to extract the legal status, the species, the site information, all of these various bits and pieces into separate tables. And I'm also going to tell it that um, because SQLite has really good full text search, I'm going to tell it that I want to make searchable some of these columns as well. So that's the dash F. So I'm going to make, be able to search by address and by caretaker and plant type. So let's run that in here. And it's churning away, loading up the data frame. And sftrees.db. There we go. We now have a, how big is that thing? It's um, a 63 megabyte database. I am going to, in this other window, I'm going to publish it to the internet, um, because this takes a few seconds. I want to get it running. Um, dataset Publish can work with Heroku or Zite now, and it can publish your database to the internet and give it a URL. And um, we'll see that in a moment. But anyway, um, here's my, in fact, no, that looks like that's finished. This is on the internet. This is trees. Um, on the, on the, it has a URL. And you'll notice that now that I've um, extracted those columns out, these are hyperlinks. So if I click on Species, New Zealand Christmas tree, I can see that that's got its own row, and there are 8,600 of these New Zealand Christmas trees in San Francisco. I can search within those just for, let's look for trees that are on, I don't know, California Street. And there are 40 California Street trees that are of species New Zealand Christmas tree. So based on this, I couldn't resist building a little application on the top to make it slightly more exciting. Um, so I built this. This is, the, this is San Francisco Tree Search. And what this will let me do is search for cherry trees, 
and it'll do a hit to the data, a, a data set data, um, JSON API and let me zoom in and see the cherry trees. Or I can say, you know what, show me olive trees on, I don't know, Polk Street. And there are the olive trees on Polk Street, Polk Street, which, you know, I didn't know I wanted this, but it turns out the thing I've always wanted to build is a search engine for San Francisco trees. Uh, come and talk to me about this. Um, it's all open source. It's available for you to play with. Thank you very much. <laughs>